they were been offered a thousand to two thousand US dollars a month just to allow their photos to be posted and they don't have to do anything else they actually get more money if they're willing to do the little video clip saying hi John thank you for the flowers or whatever really missing you Sar experience Privit and welcome to another vodka podcast with me, Connor Klein. Greetings from Alexandria in the center of Ukraine. In today's episode, I'm going to be outlining the five biggest mistakes that I've seen boomers make when dating here in Eastern Europe, whether it happens to be in this country, Ukraine, neighboring Russia, or in Belarus. I've been helping guys. Uh, with dating in Eastern Europe for about three years. I mean, before that, I have a lot of experience being here myself over 10 years, and obviously with my friends before I started to do this, uh, consulting either online or in person with the guys who come and live this our experience with me. Uh, and in particular, I've had a lot of uh, clients. I had more in the beginning when I started uh, helping guys online with their dating lives here in Eastern Europe with respect to guys who are, say, 55 plus. Now, I did look up Exactly, the boomer generation is from 58 to 75, if I'm not mistaken, but basically we'll say 55 up. And this is the first video in a three part series. I'm going to also do a similar video for the five biggest mistakes I've seen the other generations make, so the X Geners and the Millennials. And even though these mistakes are the biggest I've seen with guys who are older than 55, does affect the guys who are younger than that as well and also some of the other mistakes that you'll see in the other two parts of the of the series also affect <laughs> affect all guys basically but you definitely see trends I've noticed big trends in what type of uh, big mistakes are made by guys who fall into these three categories so maybe you're a boomer yourself and you can obviously get full value in avoiding these five mistakes but even if you're not you're still going to get some value out of the video in terms of understanding uh, what not to do here in Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia if you are coming uh, to date Eastern European local women. Uh, you know, I've been here for 10 years, over 10 years in the region, dating, traveling, and living. And, you know, things have changed. And I think that's over the last decade. So, uh, and you could say they've definitely dramatically changed over the last 30 years. And I think that's part of the reason why these mistakes are afflict guys who are older who are we'll say 55 plus uh, more than the other generation so let's jump into the first actually just before we jump into it, I'm in Alexandria I should say why <laughs> we're in the center of Ukraine I've actually been traveling in the center and I'm gonna have a vlog very soon it's gonna be unvisited Ukraine it's the part is basically I'm in the part of Ukraine that almost no uh, foreign visitors come to I've uh, been down in Krivi Rig, I've been in Krapivnitsky, I'm here in Alexandria, and I will have a vlog from my experience of traveling in this region very soon on the channel, so watch out for that. That is coming up. So let's jump into the first mistake made in particular by boomers when they come to date beautiful, sincere Eastern European women here in Eastern Europe. So the first biggest mistake is a consequence of boomers not being as tech savvy as the generations that have come after them. Now, I'm not saying that all boomers are not tech savvy. Of course, there are some, but in general, you see boomers get caught out by what's known as letter writing scams, PPL sites, so paper letter scams. And that's basically in large part because they don't understand technology as well as the generations below them. So typically what happens in a PPL scam is you go online to an international dating site, but most of them are focused here in Ukraine or Russia, you know, with the women supposedly been from those countries, uh, although it has kind of expanded a little bit to other countries like Colombia or <laughs> the Philippines, maybe. Uh, but basically the focus has always been here in Ukraine with some other countries playing a minor role. And you log on, you pay for, first of all, first red flag is you pay for communication, which means you're paying to talk, to just chat, to uh, someone else, uh, supposedly a beautiful woman here in Ukraine who is looking to marry, uh, ostensibly marry a, a North American, a Western European man in general is how it works, or some, a foreigner to leave Ukraine. And the big issue there is, of course, that you're paying for just communication. Now, 
I don't think genera younger generations are caught up, but it's because they understand, well, what's the value of just being able to talk to someone um, and you can't, how do you verify that you're really talking to that person in particular? And I understand the origin of these sites and the whole, um, we'll say, international dating or Eastern European, we can call them mail order bride, even though they never, <laughs> they were never mail order bride. Someone was shipping a wife out <laughs> in a package. I will talk a little bit about that and why that, probably the description actually is another mistake that often boomers make. But basically, they're paying for communication. They believe they're talking to this beautiful woman. Uh, and that's the first thing. There's usually something like, uh, I always call Bob from Ohio or Jimmy from Nashville is, is sitting there in his rural uh, small town. And he's chatting online to beautiful Olga, who is, we'll say Jimmy from Nashville is, uh, oh, well, he's going to be a boomer. So we'll say he's 60. And he's chatting with beautiful Olga, who is, we'll say, 28 years of age from, we'll say from this town, Alexandria, in the center of Ukraine. And first of all, he just believes that he is really talking to this woman. He's paying for communication. And a lot of these, these sites, they charge guys run up huge bills just to talk to a woman. And they're talking by chat, right? So they're just typing messages like letters. That's the first thing. Uh, even emails and letters, people don't really write that so much anymore, especially a woman who's uh, of that age here in Ukraine. It's all text messaging for a long time. So basically, first issue is being tech savvy and be able to, I guess, kind of spot scams on the internet that are uh, probably very obvious to guys who are younger. And as I said, it's not just boomers that get caught up, but that I have had some uh, consulting calls where I help guys who are, even, who are younger, who are uh, probably, yeah, probably millennials even. But these kind of scams definitely afflict the boomers more than they are going to afflict the younger generations and you know I used to when I first started out helping guys online uh, guys contact me I help them uh, vet women that they met online to see if they're a scammer or not or if they really general is it really the woman they're talking to because quite often it's going to be Igor sitting in a, yeah, I don't know Siberia or, or maybe even around the corner here um, in his apartment uh, he, we'll call him Oleg uh, Oleg here in uh, in Alexandria or it can be anywhere in Ukraine or Russia or somewhere else in the world maybe yeah basically they're normally can often be a guy is the point of one that you can make because they're just exchanging text messages what I noticed when I you know after I helped maybe four five six seven guys on these consulting calls you know I researched the profiles it became very clear to me uh, all of these guys have been scammed and it's super clear to me I mean obviously with my background as a lawyer very thorough I go through everything okay we have to look for evidence that this is you know a scam basically you are not talking to this woman um, and I'll get into a little bit later on in this video some of the real telltale signs uh, about even whether it happens to be a PPL scam like this online or a real person so that you can know better uh, but basically I actually felt after maybe the first 10 15 I done this is pointless <laughs> I mean all of these guys uh, must know deep down that they've been scammed uh, they don't want to accept it because uh, a lot of these sites, and I have other videos that are dealing this in more detail. I'll link them up above in cards, down below in the description to the video. I haven't seen those podcasts, but basically you even have software now that learns uh, your behavior, what you're attracted to, everything from eye color to the words they use. So basically just become your ideal woman online, right? And you never get to talk to her in person. <laughs> um, and it's just this person who wants to stay on the site, charging you huge amounts of money uh, just for conversation. Now it has evolved, they now start to do little video clips because they actually pay the girls uh, to do that as well. Um, you know, I here in Ukraine, girls show me their phone, just how they're solicited. Uh, they've been offered a thousand to 2000 US dollars a month just to allow their photos to be posted and they don't have to do anything else. They actually get more money if they're willing to do the little video clip saying, hi John, thank you for the flowers or whatever, really missing you. Like this kind of stuff uh, so that's the first thing that tends to catch up boomers uh, more than other generations and it is the biggest uh, scam when you look at the figures of what some of these uh, companies make with the PPL sites it's staggering hundreds of millions a year it's a massive primarily scam industry so my first rule of thumb is someone comes to me and asks me I don't want to do these wedding calls I tell guys listen you have to ask me if you're a boomer and you have to ask me if you've been scammed online, believe me, you're almost certainly 
it's 99.9% .9 certain that you've been scammed online. So stop it. Don't pay for communication. There was another YouTuber who quoted, because um, if I understood correctly, he, he bought an existing matchmaking service that had been here for a long time in Ukraine. And they were doing these um, kind of vetting calls. And I think he said it was something like, I was close to 99% anyways. It's around that ball figure of uh, their previous uh, vetting processes show that it was a scammer. They were not really talking to a genuine woman who was interested in them at all. So with that kind of rate, basically, if you need to ask about it, you've been scammed. So just don't do it. <laughs> if you're paying for communication, stop it. Uh, but then again, some guys, it's a bit like an addiction and they will go on and on and on with it. So that is the first big uh, mistake I think boomers make is that they're not really au fait with the technology and understanding what's going on and what are the normal modes of communication uh, here in Ukraine, for example, and that they're writing all these letters and paying huge amounts of money to be um, to basically be, be scammed by e Oleg sitting at home here in his uh, apartment writing to you all times of the night when it's the uh, well, yeah, night here in Ukraine when it's daytime in the US. Yeah, I don't really don't like talking about the scams. I've made so many videos about them before. And if you watch this channel and you're still letter writing, paying for communication, then you can't really help him very much. Anyways, no matter what your age and generation you're in, uh, basically it's a scam industry, 99% from what I can see. So uh, the second big mistake that boomers in particular make when they come here to date in Eastern Europe is they lead with money. So they go and say, I'm from Nashville. I have lots of greenbacks. And they present this as like the big attraction to being interested in them. Now, leading with money is fine as long as you don't keep your power away. You actually understand what you're doing when you do that. Uh, you don't believe that you're attracting women because of your amazing personality and that she's really in love with you. She's in love with the greenbacks. That's normally what happens because you're going to attract a lot of gold diggers, women who are primarily interested in money. And that's, you know, indicative of the fact that you led with money. Now, having money is great. It's a great booster. Uh, you can leave with it, but again, you don't want to delude yourself if you're going to do that, um, <laughs> that the woman is interested in you in, for some other reason. I think this is a big issue when guys go, especially boomers, and they use matchmakers because they basically leave with money. They're, they're paying for <laughs> dates to be introduced as introductions, we'll say, to be introduced to someone. And, you know, I have another podcast about that, about why getting dates is the worst metric for dating, no matter what your age in Eastern Europe, again, linked above, above, above in a card and down below in the description. So there's a big issue with the frame, especially when boomers are using matchmakers. So matchmaking basically is you're paying for introductions. Now, if you are paying for introductions or a matchmaker, you have to remember the frame that you're creating. You're basically been introduced to a woman uh, who's probably on free sites that you could go talk to her, right? And she probably uh, hasn't paid. Now, it's different if she's paid the matchmaker to be there, that means she's invested. But otherwise, she hasn't invested in anything. And basically, think of her from her point of view, she's gonna go there. This guy spent a lot of money just been introduced to me. That means implicitly, she's gonna see you as lower value and basically only see you for the money. It's a lot more likely in that case because basically you had to pay all this money to be she just you could have found her on tinder you could have found her on a free dating site uh, but basically this is the frame that's been set up now some matchmakers do actually charge the women to be part of it and are a bit are a lot more genuine <laughs> than the ones that don't uh, so you definitely want to be careful with that type of frame because uh, basically the woman might be a scammer per se but she's probably going to be attracted by the fact of your money and if you're fine with that you just say connor older guy I don't want to put in the work change myself develop which I find is the biggest issue with boomers and why they get suckered into these matchmaking agents they want boom I already made the money let me go home with a wife the kind of quintessential wife hunter here well you might go home with a wife but you know how like is the last one you get her back to the states since she doesn't really have that much of a strong connection with you as a person but more with your wallet so the third big mistake that I see in particular afflicting boomers here in Eastern Europe is they fall for the traditional Ukrainian wife narrative as propagated by dodgy marriage making um, matchmaking services marriage agencies dating sites that all these women here are poor Stepford wives dreaming of leaving and being your domestic servant in the US 
Uh, <laughs> that is not the case. They are not dreaming of cooking and cleaning for some guy. Uh, most of the women here, in particular, the younger they are. Now, I know boomers, because they're over 55, um, most of them are actually realistic. They, they don't get lured in by the 20-year-old super supermodel, right? They're probably looking for a woman who's between 35 and, and 50, maybe. Um, but whilst those women are closer to that traditional image than the younger women, it's really not the case overall. So if you think it's going to be like your grandparents' time and you're a boomer, it ain't going to be the case. Maybe in the 1990s it was a little bit more like that. Uh, women really were interested in being kind of the traditional wife and cooking, cleaning, and doing all this kind of stuff. Um, and um, yeah, <laughs> uh, that's just not the, what I see here in general. So if you are looking for that, which a lot of boomers are, um, probably not going to be the case. But there's still lots of good reasons to marry a Ukrainian woman. I don't want to be too defeatist and down. Uh, have negative energy in, in for your negative outlook in this video uh, just don't be lured into that stereotype because it's basically propagated by the marriage agencies and dating sites that are disingenuous uh, they want you to believe that fantasy so they can milk you for all the money that you're worth for them so fourth reason is boomers more than the other generations don't understand the difference between age gap and value gap. So I have another podcast I did recently about the value gap linked up above and down below. If you haven't seen that one, very valuable video to go and watch, no matter what age you are. And basically, there's a lot of talk, uh, especially on, well, in general, I would say the genuine matchmaking services and the disingenuous matchmaking services definitely about the age gap, right? So they all talk about the age gap. I mean, the quintessential thing is that um, a lot of boomers think you're going to have massive age gap like you can be 60 and marry and be with a 20 year old supermodel uh no that does, does not happen at all uh, but you can have a large age gap a larger age gap than in the west uh i think in general but you have to understand the difference between age gap and value gap and i have went into a lot of detail up in that video but basically the issue a lot of times not actually the age gap it's just the value gap so if you're again jimmy from nashville and you know you don't have much charisma you're not good looking even for a 60 year old um you don't have much money relative in the us or status and you think that you can have a 40 40 year old 40 year age gap here with a woman who's very attractive that's not realistic but you probably can't even have a relationship realistically with a woman uh who's maybe 35 uh or 40 uh who's good looking here because there's a value gap. And, you know, I talk about a lot in that podcast. You can definitely should go and watch it if you're, if you're curious. Uh, because then when you bring her back to the States, I mean, the value gap is going to be even bigger. So you definitely want to avoid that. But in general, I mean, a lot of other, um, we'll call them dating coaches are telling you, yeah, it has to be, you can have a maximum number of years. And that's all fine and everything. But you're kind of missing out on the value gap part of it. That if you are, if you can't find a date in your own hometown, there's no point really in imagining that you can have, uh, you're gonna meet someone here in Ukraine with a massive age and value gap, right? <laughs> the two of them are obviously connected. So when you can, of course, if there's a smaller value gap, so basically it's a woman who's unattractive and maybe 30, it's probably still gonna be possible, and an, an unattractive woman who's 40 relative to for here, then that might still be possible. Um, but definitely overall, which I do agree with, with most of the other dating coaches who say, listen, if you're, uh, if you're thinking there's, it's easy to have a 20 to 30 year old age gap, in particular, if you don't live in Ukraine, not going to happen. And I guess overall, boomers are a little bit more realistic about that because they're older and there is naturally going to be a bigger age gap because old men, we all want younger women who are still fertile, it's just biology. So, so the fifth and final reason that I want to give you why boomers in particular are caught out here is they do not understand the local dating market whatsoever. They kind of imagine Ukraine, and this I guess is boomers who've never been to Ukraine or Eastern Europe in person, they think it's the 1990s that, I don't know, people don't have electricity or something. It's funny because they're able to communicate them with them on PPL sites. Uh, or that maybe not electricity, but it's very basic, it's very poor. People are trapped here. They're desperate. Women are just desperate to get out to America uh, to be saved by these white knights coming in for the, you know, for a week-long marriage shopping trip. 
Uh, again, maybe, maybe, because I was around here in the 90s, so I can't really say it was ever possible, but there was a small chance of that back in the 1990s. Today, that's not the reality of dating as a woman here in Eastern Europe. They have lots of options. And one of them is the main reason why you can talk to them, Jimmy from Nashville, from Nashville. Basically, technology has changed, right? So, you know, things like Instagram, um, guys from all over the world can contact them. They have a better sense of their value on an international dating market, not just the local one here. So say a good woman is a five here, she's probably gonna be a six or seven in terms of looks, because that's what we guys look at the first when we're uh, assessing a woman, it's biology again. Uh, and she's gonna know that, right? She's not gonna be naive about it. Probably once by the time she's like 18. So don't delude yourself that they're all here dreaming of a, a green card. Now there are some women who are dreaming of that green card. But as I said, when, you know, earlier when I was talking about, in particular my podcast about when the value gap, when you bring the woman back to the States, if that's what you're thinking of doing, again, thinking of Nashville. Well, she's interested in the green card, which means when she has that, <laughs> she doesn't need you anymore, right? So there's a small number of women of that. They can also travel a lot more than it was in the nineties. Um, you know, the cost of travel is dramatically lower. The visa, uh, requirements for Ukrainian citizens and also for Russians and Belarusians have dropped uh, a lot since then. It's more for Ukrainians because they can travel to all of Schengen, which is most of uh, the European Union, we'll say, uh, without a visa for basically six months a year. Uh, listen, most of them get proposition nonstop to go out to work in the Middle East. They don't need your green card. It's not a big draw. Also, being a Westerner, in particular in Ukraine, has almost no automatic pre perceived value anymore, especially if you are a tourist or you're coming here uh, <laughs> wife hunting. Uh, it's funny when I think about the idea of mail order brides, it's actually like, like they're kind of packed and then sent off. I mean, that would be human trafficking, first of all, and it's never, ever, ever been the case that's been that, that, that blatant, right, that you're obviously coming here shopping for a wife. It's a ridiculous idea, I think, in 20, you know, 2021, when I'm shooting this video, it's now almost May 2021. That's why we get this spectacular weather. Spring came a little bit late. Uh, so don't be deluded if you are a boomer to thinking that these poor girls have no options. If she is an attractive Ukrainian woman, we'll say under the age of 35 and probably even more than that, she has loads of options. It's basically an international dating market for those women who are you know, that you can speak to on the internet. I have another podcast about the internationalization of beauty, again, up above and down below. If you haven't seen that one, it's one to check out. Um, so basically don't delude yourself about that. Um, it's not the 1990s. Uh, the Soviet Union just happens to collapse. It's over 30 years ago. And Ukrainian women, no matter what their age, they understand their relative values. So, and they don't really think that you're super cool just because you're from the West. A little bit, you get definitely get that, and I've talked about it in other videos in Russia and Belarus a lot more than you do here, but definitely not in Ukraine, which is the center of the, definitely the scam, Odessa Mama scam central for the scam, online scam market, and you know, that affects boomers in particular. Just the concluding point on, you know, the type of women who look for a boomer, we'll say. Um, basically, especially here in Ukraine, vast majority of women actually want to find a local guy. Now, it could be a foreigner who lives here. Uh, I think that's a lot better for dating, but obviously that's not something everybody can do or wants to do. Um, but the women that are of high value on the dating market here, they're not so interested in necessarily meeting a foreigner. Now, they still might, especially if they want to meet one here, and maybe they're going to meet them on Tinder probably or something like that. It can always happen. But in general, it's the women that are not as high value that they go and they try to exploit their arbitrage on this international dating market by meeting a foreigner. So also bear that in mind that, because um, I got a question for some guy the other day, wrote me an email saying that all the women look at supermodels on this dating site and he was a boomer. And um, yeah, I was saying, is it real? No, <laughs> they're not gonna look like that if they're on the international dating site. They don't look like top models because if they're genuinely there and they might be genuinely there, just that the women who look like that, they've already, you know, they got a high value man here in Ukraine, whether he happens to be a local or a foreigner, and they're not looking outside of that. So when 
back last year, I decided to try and do something to help guys, in particular boomers, um, not exclusively, but a lot of the guys are getting scammed online because I had pulled my uh, mailing list. I'll just explain in a second how you can get on that. Uh, and I decided to help the guys with a boot camp at the time. It's called Slavic Scam Buster Secrets. And it's particularly aimed, I think now, because now it's on demand for boomers uh, or anyone who is trying to avoid either the online scams or the biggest scams when you come here to Ukraine. It is a massive industry scamming for men in this country in particular, in Odessa Mama, my, as much as I love Odessa, it is scam central for those kind of scams. Uh, so I'm gonna put a link that down below and go check it out. If you are, you know, maybe you think that you are being scammed or you are worried about it and you wanna, you know, uh, take a lot of shortcuts by taking the training now rather than learning the hard way by getting scammed later. Also, you can, um, reach out to me for a consulting call. Also got that link down below and we can chat about a particular case that you might have. It's actually included anyways in uh, Slavic Scam Buster Secrets. You might as well do the training. Uh, it'll probably work out better for you. But anyways, both those options are below. And if you are interested in dating here in Eastern Europe or just lifestyle in general, maybe moving to the region where it happens to be Ukraine, a neighboring Belarus or Russia, then I launch my new programs exclusively for my most loyal fans who are on my free mailing list down below is how you join there's a link there you get a free gift the five biggest mistakes made by western men when they come here to date in east europe it's a free checklist so you go type in your email address confirm your email and you get that as a free gift and then you are on my free mailing list and then later on um yeah you'll receive some emails about how you can join the latest programs and that's it basically that's what i went on online first video in three-part series I am going to go and enjoy this absolutely amazing late April afternoon it's actually coming up to Orthodox Easter which can be celebrated this weekend and as I said I have some blogs coming from this region the center of Ukraine so you stay with me to the end of this video and you are interested maybe in traveling to some parts of the country that are less well known I know that also a lot of guys who regardless of their age also go to some of the provincial cities in particular to meet women that they've met online originally so probably going to be a good uh, series for you to watch also my vlogs from around here see you very soon in the next video Dopobachna, Disvedanya from Alexandria in Ukraine Sar experience